My name is Jamin Gurker. I'm a local realtor with Keller Williams in South Central Alaska, and my mission is to help you to build an intentional and significant legacy for yourself and your family by coaching you in real estate. And the purpose of today's video is to answer the question, is living in Alaska worth it? Because one thing that I, I see some people do is they just kind of gloss over the fact that there are actual costs of living in Alaska beyond just the, the financial expense of it. Um, there are certain things that are just inherently going to be more challenging about living in Alaska that you're probably not going to find in many other places. That's not to say no other places, but in a lot of other places. So ultimately, only you can decide if Alaska is going to be somewhere that's that's going to be worth um, you living up here for the, the cost that it's, it's going to exact on you. And I'm going to go ahead and do my best to kind of just talk about some of those issues that a lot of people don't really hear about um, in all the, the brochures that they've received. Um, so we'll jump into that in just a minute. If you haven't done so already, give this video a like and go ahead and subscribe so you can receive more content like this in the future. Now, let's go and jump into today's video talking about the, you know, helping you decide if Alaska is going to be worth it to you to move up here. The first big thing that you need to consider is are you comfortable living in an area that's not a metropolitan area? It's no secret Alaska is really not, really not this huge metroplex area like a Dallas or San Francisco or New York, something like that. And a lot of people know that, but I don't think they really appreciate it until they've actually moved here and lived here for a little bit. If you're used to an environment more like that, Alaska is gonna be a little bit of a shock for you. And for some people, it's a good shock. Honestly, it's more of a relief and less so of a shock for other people. They need to have kind of that pace and the constant jostling and the constant stream of, of things that you can go and do. Um, by and large, there are going to be way less things you can do in Alaska than you can in the lower 48 and kind of those big metropolitan areas. For instance, we'll get like some comedians, they'll show up every now and then, some live performances. But by and large, the, the big name stuff is probably not going to be happening up here. So that being the case, people who really need that or really need like malls or the big name brand places to be happy, um, they probably might want to reconsider Alaska if that's something that's really important to them. The second thing you need to consider is that if your family does not live up here, then you really need to think about, okay, am I comfortable? Am I okay with only seeing family once? A year sometimes you know multiple years without seeing them for some people this is actually a relief that they don't have to see their family very often for other people this is uh, this is going to be something you really need to think through um, you know that's important to you just constantly having family on call and they're not in Alaska then this is something that you really need to consider because it's not easy getting to and from Alaska okay it's um, I will plan a one, sometimes maybe two trips a year down to the lower 48, and it is definitely not a uh, not a simple thing. Um, it feels like you have to make a trip just to get back to the mainland of the U.S., and then you have to make another trip to wherever you're going. So it's definitely not simple or convenient. Um, it's doable, obviously, and people do it all the time, but there's definitely a, a certain layer of, uh, of challenge to it that you don't have in the lower 48. Third thing that you really need to consider is, are you going to be active enough in Alaska year round to make it worthwhile? The summers are beautiful. There are a gazillion things you can go and do. If you're into hunting and fishing and surfing and rock climbing and hiking and camping and pretty much anything outdoorsy, paragliding, if there's anything you wanna do outdoors, chances are you're gonna be able to do it or a version of it up here in Alaska during the summertime. Now, if you're only gonna focus on summertime activities, Alaska might be tough for you to actually live up here year round, because obviously we have this uh, this little season called winter, and it does last for usually about five to six months or so. You have to make sure that you've got stuff you can do year round, and if that's not the case, then it might be a little tough for you, and that's something you definitely have to consider. Um, I personally did not really get into a whole lot of wintertime sports before I got up here. You know, one of the reasons being, you know, in Texas, not a whole lot of wintertime activities going on down there that you can speak of. But I got up here and started getting more into like the cross country skiing and actually you can do a lot of hiking during the wintertime as well, places you wouldn't be able to go before because, you know, now you've got, uh, you've got snow boots 
and you can essentially form like your own stairway going up the side of a mountain that you couldn't couldn't do before during the during the summertime. So there's lots of great options and you can definitely get into it. Um, just make sure that if you're somebody where you've completely just decided no, absolutely no wintertime activities and I don't care about this other part of the year, it might be a little tough initially getting used to it. So make sure that you've got at least an open mind going forward about things that you can do year round while you're up here in Alaska. Otherwise, it's gonna be kind of tough and I'm not sure it's gonna really be worth it for you in the long run. Let's take a break real quick here. For those of you who've been watching for a while, you do know that I offer a free relocation guide for those who are considering moving up here. Um, like I said, this is free and this does answer a lot of basic questions people have as they're moving up to Alaska and kind of answering some questions about the, the different areas. If that's something that would benefit you, do make sure you reach out to me on my website down below in the little description section and you have a chance to write me a message. Just make sure you put in their relocation guide and that will you know, help me know what it is that, that you're wanting, uh, wanting help with. And please also do provide your number if you want me to reach out to you and ask you specifically what questions you have. Um, the relocation guide does a great job answering the basic questions, but there are a gazillion detail questions that it wasn't designed to answer. So please make sure you reach out to me there and then be happy to provide that for you. The fourth thing that you really need to consider as you're moving up here is, are you willing to give it a couple of years to see if it works? Because making it through your first year up in Alaska, the first full year is a rite of passage up here. And the reason for that is it's tough. You know, unless you're you're coming from somewhere where it's already you know cold and you have to deal with the long winters anyway, like the Wisconsin's and Missouri's of the world, then Alaska winters are gonna be it's gonna be a um, a moment where you really have to decide if this is gonna be worth it to you or not. But I will say, after you've done it once, it becomes easier after that. You you know what to expect at this point. You know, hey, around this time of the year, it's gonna get really dark and. I need that sunlight, so I need to go to Hawaii or somewhere like that. If they're going to open up and make it a little bit easier for people to visit now, um, I need to go to Florida or wherever else you're going to get sunlight. And, um, you know, maybe I need to go plug into some groups around this time of year to kind of battle off some seasonal depression that's going on. So this is really where you start narrowing down, figuring out, okay, can I make this work even after doing all these adjustments? If it's still something I just can't really do, then it's it's something you really have to decide if Alaska is gonna be right for you. But make sure you give it a chance and not just with one year, make sure you give it at least two to see if it's gonna be something that's gonna work for you long-term. Final thing that I would say is that when you move to Alaska, you really just need a really just need, need a kiss, easy, convenient access to the lower 48 goodbye. Okay, that's that is no longer there. As I kind of alluded to before, it is a bit of a challenge getting anywhere to the lower 48 because the maps don't really do a good job in showing just how far north we are compared to the rest of the, the lower 48. So it's it pretty much feels like two journeys every time you need to go somewhere to the lower 48 because usually you're going to fly to Seattle, which that's usually about five, six hours, and then you're going to be going to wherever you're going. So it's uh, it's never convenient. It's never easy to go anywhere to the lower 48. So for that reason, you're usually going to be staying in Alaska for you know, long stretches of time for people who are used to road trips and getting out and easy access to everything in the lower 48, then this could be a bit of a drawback. Um, if you're in Texas and you wanna to go to Colorado, that's only gonna take you know about a day or so of, of uh, good intentional focused driving. And you know you can really get to anywhere in the US within a couple of days, but that's, that's gonna be a little bit more of a challenge and it's gonna require a lot more commitment if you're living up in Alaska. So I sure hope this has been useful for you. Alaska overall is a great place to live, but anyone who tells you about Alaska but doesn't tell you these things you have to take into consideration, not being 100% honest. So wanted to make sure that you at least heard that from me. If this has been useful, do make sure you give this video a like and drop me a comment down below of any other tips or things that, uh, that you'd like to know about. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.